What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and it is Wednesday, so you know what that means. It's another disgusting video where I bring on another Jaguar of personalities, and I was really excited for this because this is the first Jaguar YouTuber I actually watched on YouTube, and he's making an appearance on the channel. I got jagging off in the building. How you doing, man? Yeah, man. What's going on? Good to, good to be here. I, I appreciate the hot, the hot build-up, man. <laughs> you know, I gotta, I gotta be hyping my boys up. I don't, I don't be getting you guys on this channel to not hype you guys up. Well, it's well deserved. I'm gonna fucking go to Jags YouTube. <laughs> and, uh, get and I'll treat it in, man. <laughs> the fucking uh, OG of this shit. The OG. I ain't the OG, but I'm the BG, the best G. <laughs> <laughs> and another reason I wanted to have him on here is because, you know, I've had other guests on here. No one's quite on my cussing level. And like to, you know, really show some personality. But you will, you'll be there with me. This video, I'm thinking. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I, I forgot to ask you before this started. Do I gotta kind of need to keep this PG or whatever? Whatever. I, I always ask before I go on because I've done stuff with like Sports Fury and um, uh, Saw Sports, and like usually they're cool with it. But uh, I don't know how people. Nah, dude, I'm not monetized yet. We're nine subscribers away from getting monetized. Hit that subscribe button. Until then, fuck, fuck, uh, fuck. fuck. <laughs> Anyway, guys, we're here to talk about the Jaguars offensive line. That's been the focus of the week. Now, before I usually get into these interviews, I kind of like to ask my guests, you know, kind of just give me your overall feelings on how you feel about this offensive line group heading into next year. I feel a lot better than last year. Like, everybody hyped up how much offensive line was a uh, soft spot, was a bad spot for us. But the thing is, four of the five starters were on injured reserve. And then you got Jeremy Parnell, who's a fucking disgrace. He's gone. And uh, we got Jawan Taylor, who I think will be a beast. Part of Gators till I die. And um, I hope – but, yeah, I think, you know, with Cam coming back, like, hopefully Andrew Norwell gets more acquainted with the offense. Brandon Lender is – Brandon Lender, of course. AJ Cam's up and down, but, like, I'm, I think he's all right. So, um I think it should be a much better year for the for the group as a whole. So, you know, I think that's the big key to this next year is that we need our offensive linemen to stay healthy. But it's hard to be an offensive lineman in the NFL and stay healthy. We know that these five guys that are coming in now have potential to be a really good group. How do you feel about kind of the depth underneath underneath these guys as far as that goes? Um, I'll tell you what. I hope they upgraded it a lot from last year because, you know, we had – shit, I think one Josh Wells and – um yep. the other guy, I can't think of – Josh Walker. Of, no, J Josh Walker was a fucking disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, I, God damn it, I cannot think of his name. The guy who, like, is kind of the utility knife, but, like, he can play in different places that is decent. Tyler Shatley? That one, yes. And uh, him and Josh Wells, like, they're decent backups, but, like, I don't know. We got to see what this um, undrafted class, some of the guys we brought in, to, um, hopefully, you know, at least fill the void. Not be, obviously, the caliber of starters, but at least do the job well because it was a revolving door. And, you know, with Leonard Fournette out, and with Leonard Fournette out, uh, Blake Bortles, in a way, pretty much got led to the wolves and it just – was a train wreck. So, um, it can't, I, I'll say this, it can't be any worse than last year. <laughs> that's, that's, that's facts for the, for sure. So we talked, you talked about AJ can a little bit. He's been kind of one of our most inconsistent, consistently in their guys. And the Jaguars just extended him. You know, they obviously see something in AJ can and he's shown flashes. Do you think this is a – well, obviously not for a contract year, obviously, but do you think that this is going to be kind of A.J. Cam's breakout year, or do you think he's going to do much of the same he's been doing? Well I'll, tell you, well, I'll tell you what. The dude's only making $5 million a year, so it's not so it's not like – That's true. They, they can say fuck it. So, um, A.J., I'm honestly shocked they brought – like and not not necessarily to say that he was the weakest link of our offensive line, but just the fact that you know, like you said, he's had flashes, but he's been inconsistent. And usually, with players like that, people tend to shy tend to shy away from. 
So I am kind of surprised. So I am kind of surprised they brought him back. But as far as make or break year, I think he. I think even though he got the extension, I think he's pretty much well aware that you know this is his last shot. You obviously saw Jeremy Pardell's gone, and um, you know the same thing can happen to him because Pardell obviously was our worst offensive lineman, and then you know out of everybody on it. Probably he's probably he's the next one on the chopping block. So um, I'd say pressure's on, pressure's on him to perform. Whether he does that or not is up to him. He's obviously got the talent to do it. So we've talked about uh, Jeremy Parnell quite a bit in this video as well. Now we're talking about his successor right. this season. We're talking about J. Juan Taylor, and I know you're a fan. You're a Florida guy, so you've obviously seen this guy play. You know what he's about. You know where you kind of like. When you seen him getting mocked for the first round for the Jaguars, were you about that? And then, you know, kind of talk about how you felt when they managed to snag him up in the second round and how you think he'll do this year. In the first round, let me put it to you mildly. Hell no. <laughs> you, were, you were on the same bus as me. I didn't want it either. Yeah, I love – like, anybody that's followed me knows that, like, I'm not big on taking offensive linemen in the first round but especially a guy who's not going to be a, le a left tackle within the top 10 picks, that to me is insane. Now, I think Jawan Taylor should have been a first-round pick. He should have been a late first-round pick, and I'm honestly shocked at where we got him. So the fact that we got him – if we weren't going to take Irv Smith in the second round, Jawan, Ta Jawan Taylor would have been the next best obvious choice. And um, But what I see with him, he fits the mold of what our offense does. He's good at run blocking. The Jags love to run the football. And um, pass blocking, it needs a, it needs a little work, but I still, I still feel like everything I've seen from Jawan Taylor, and, you know, he's a good guy. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's going he's gonna to learn probably. He might struggle a little bit his rookie season, but I think overall he's going to develop into a solid tackle. And like I said, in the second round, excellent value pick. I would agree with that. I was very excited to see that uh, he managed to slip to us in the second round, and it was just hilarious. Like It was literally like 2016 with Miles Jack. That was supposed to be our first-round pick, but then we ended up getting him in the second round. Now let's flip the tackle side, go over to the left tackle. We're going to talk about Cam Robinson for a little bit. Obviously in 2017, at least in my opinion, he showed flashes of a guy that can be a franchise left tackle. However, he's coming off an injury. What are you thinking about Cam Robinson this year? Oh, I love Cam Robinson. Cam Robinson, I think, definitely is one of the best and most underrated young left tackles in the game today. But, you know, luckily with the injury, he suffered it early, early enough to where, you know, he'll be recovered almost all the way, I think. I know it took uh, Dante Fowler a little bit, another fucking disgrace, a, a little bit to um, – Get him, get himself completely right, even though he had the bad sophomore season. But um, with offensive line, I think it's a little bit different because he's not using athleticism as much. So just the fact that uh, Cam Robinson is an excellent technician, I think coming off of the injury, I think he's going to be okay. Like, I, th I don't know if he'll be back to what he was in 2017. It might take a year or two, but – I still think he's going to be solid and an upgrade over Eric Flowers, Josh Walker, whoever the fuck else we had playing the left tackle last year. We need, we need to, uh, God, that's somebody needs to make a thing where we just have so many forgetful Jaguars, but players that you'd be like, oh my God, I remember how shitty he was because we we need to throw like Josh Walker at right tackle for that team. Well, I did the list of the, all. The, well, I did the list video of um, the worst first round busts, but I mean that's a pretty extensive list for Pete for shitty players in Jaguars. Man. Todd Bowman would be the quarterback. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. <laughs> Who would be the quarterback? Blaine Gabbert. Well, I'm talking about more like like forgetful figures, not like people that were just kind of big old busts. You know what I mean? Oh, so. I just – I mean, the only reason I remember Blaine Gabbard is for <laughs> – Because he's just shit. Uh, Dude, I, I one know. of the most frustrated I've ever been as a Jags fan is when we lost to the Cardinals and Blaine Gabbard was a quarterback. That was – I remember. I think I was actually at that game. Really? <laughs> yeah. I remember it. I thought, yeah, matter of fact, I was at that game. 
I was, I was, my friend's a big Cardinals fan too. And, and Phil Dawson, I remember that like that whole year he was shit in the bed, couldn't hit a field goal to save his life. Motherfucker, 40 years old, hits a career long field goal to beat us. Oh, you talking about 2017. Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought you were talking about when, uh, Blaine Gabbard was with us and we played the Cardinals. Oh, oh, that, you know, either way, Blaine Gabbard is always, you know, making the Jaguars lose, whether he's on the team or the opposing team. I'll, I'll still say I'll take 10 more years of Blake Bortles before another of Blaine Gabbard. I would, I would agree with that 100%. Now, we do have a new quarterback at the helm this year, Nick Foles. It's an exciting time. It's been kind of, kind of strange at times. You know, what was your whole process with Nick Foles? You know, starting from, like, the beginning of the offseason, were you a fan of landing him, or did you kind of were a little skeptical about it, and now you're coming around? Um... Tell you the truth, of course, you know I had doubts about it just because, just because you know that's the best, that's the best one, and like no one really pursued him too hard but us. And like for for during the draft process, because I actually went to the combine this year, I was actually really on Dwayne Haskins. Like I really wanted him, but Dude. I think part of the reason that Jacksonville signed him is be signed Foles is because. At the time, they thought the Giants were going to draft Haskins, but then, you know, Dave Gettleman. But, um, <laughs> but, Classic. I, but, like, as far as Foles' ability, like, his ability to rally an offense really is second to none. The guy's clutch something I don't think we've ever had since the days of maybe Mark Brunel or maybe even David Garrard in some perspectives. As Blake Bortles, like, he might need it. He's – Statistically, in playoff wins, he's probably the second best quarterback we've ever had. But clutch was not his thing at all. No. But uh, now that uh, Foles is here, we have that in him. We have that in him, and um, I think uh, geez, I'm getting tongue tied. I'll distract the people. Even but um, I I agree. I agree with. I I like. I like the move. I think they should. I think the Jaguars should have worked the contract a little bit better. So, in two, since Fit polls with the guaranteed money in two years, if they would have if they would have worked it right, we could have got out of this contract if something went wrong. But I do see Foles being an upgrade over Mortals, and I see him. You know, you know, the knock on him is he couldn't get through a 16 game season. I mean, but at the same time, what opportunity has he really had to get through a 16 game season? So, I think Foles, I honestly am thinking if all this goes right, I think Foles will probably have the best year of his career here. I I wouldn't doubt, like, best regular season for sure, because, I mean, he's going to have that opportunity. Now, just kind of in short, do you think uh, this offensive line is going to keep Nick Foles standing upright? That depends on the health. If the guys guys stay healthy and play like they're capable of playing, like, Obviously, we talked about the inconsistent play of AJ Can. Andrew Norwell's another one that's got to step up. It's mainly the guards. And, um, of course, Juwan Taylor, even though I believe in him, he is still a rookie. But I think with his po- with his pocket awareness and um, the line being as solid as it can be to its max potential, I think definitely can protect Nick Foles and provide a good l- running game for Leonard Fournette. Let's talk about Leonard Fournette a little bit. You know, what? what is your outlook towards him? Because I see so many people on the internet having so many differing opinions. I think if this offensive line, in my opinion, stays healthy, Leonard Fournette might have a better season than he had in 2017. What are you thinking about Leonard Fournette with this offensive line? Well, there's no doubt about it. The offensive, I mean, the offensive line last year is kind of why Leonard Fournette had such a great year. But here's the thing. Like, does he do dumb shit off of the field? Yes. Does he – did he um, – is health a concern? Definitely. But um, the, th- the thing is, it, it's, am- it's amazing, though, because, like, 2017, everybody was on this guy's nuts. But now people want to cut him or trade him. You know, like, no, dude. The, the guy was our first 1,000-yard rusher and did it missing four games. Was it three or four games? I think it was four. Yeah, he did it missing four games in 2017. Imagine what ha- what would have happened if he played those four games. Now, I know he's get I know he's I know he's getting like I know he's improving his strength and conditioning this year. I know 
I think he's more. Mo- I think he's more motivated than ever because players here are grumbling on social media. There's no doubt about that. So, I think if he really is passionate about football and if he sees all this, I think he's going to find a way to turn it around. I think he's going to get back to 2017 Leonard Fournette we all know and love. So, um, everybody, like, so, so just a message that I want to put out about Fournette. Like, yeah, he had a bad year, but, you know, besides, like, D.D. Westbrook, Yannick Ngakwe, Calais Campbell, Jalen Ramsey, who the fuck didn't have a bad year for the Jaguars? Oh, you know what? I'll even throw Ronnie Harrison in there. But um, besides those guys, who did have a good year for the Jags? So just just calm down, give him another year, let him play it, let him play out his contract, and you know see where we're at. Because I think the guy has a world of potential. Like he'll be like I think he could be that player out of the backfield we've been missing since MJD left. I think there's a lot of a lot of truth to what you're saying there. Now, one last and final question that I need to ask. So I'm gonna title my last video and asked everybody that was watching. If this offensive line, there might be a little bit of bumps and injuries through the road, but I'm going to say no significant ones. No one's out for six or more weeks. You know, there's little injuries here and there. Is this offensive line going to finish as a top 10 unit in the league next year? Hmm. That's that's a tough one. If you just said top five, I'd say definitely, though. Yeah. But, uh, top, t- top 10, I think, is very do- I think it's very doable. Well, you got to think, too, because in 2017, the offensive line we had allowed a franchise low 24 sacks. And I think this offensive line we have now is better than the 2017 line we had. It very, it very well could be. A lot of that's going to depend on uh, Juwan, Juwan Taylor and um, both, of, both of the guards. We know Cam Robinson and Brandon Leonard are going to show up, but yeah. 2017, I think, and you know, I've been fo- I've been a fan of this team since you know the beginning, like all the way back in, in the days when we had Natron Means running the goddamn ball. <laughs> and um, this is probably the best line I've seen. 2017 was probably the best line I've ever seen this team have. So, I think with the I think that uh, with the players they have there, it's very doable to get to that height again, but. I think no matter what, as long as they stay healthy, they're gonna fit. They're gonna finish within the top half of the league. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I would agree with that. Hey, man, I want to thank you so much for coming onto the channel. Like I said in the preview, I'm a big fan of yours, and you know, I was a, I was really happy to have you on the channel, man. Hey, man. Pre- hey, man. Appreciate it. Anything to help you out, dude? I mean, I would love. I would, and you know, I'd love to do this again. Again, with you, talk about in other positions. Yeah, dog, for sure. So make sure oh, – Because I, ha- I have, you know, I have positions that – I have opinions that's probably going to – that's probably going to piss people off one way or another about every position on, on the team. So – See, this is why I need you on here. I need somebody to get mad at somebody, not me, in my comment sections. <laughs> well, if they talk a bunch of dumb shit, of course I'll get mad at them. <laughs> All righty, guys. I- have you, re- have you read my comment section a lot? Dude, it's so bad. You get it so bad. I freaking look at it, and I'm like, dude, I couldn't handle the stress. I mean, not, I mean, not most of it, but there's like, all, there's always a few that love the run, that love the talk shit, or call me a fat ass. But hey, I'm dieting now, so I'll be a skinny motherfucker in no time. So hey, my boy's improving himself out here. No shit talking, bro. Trying to. All right, anyway, guys, if you guys haven't already, you can check the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. We're nine subscribers away. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. Bro, if you got anything to plug, go right ahead. Uh, subscribe to Jagging Off, too. And uh, <laughs> go, J- go Jags, Duval, till we die. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Alrighty guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always you guys have a great rest of your day.